What are you guys doing? Is it, this is for you. This is your new play spot. Oh, careful. You're knocking pictures over already? I'm zoomed in because there's family photos all over the place. You're, this is not where you're supposed to be. Pumpkin, what are you doing? You just checking things out? Hung some new pictures. And this is of course the most exciting thing in the world, hang something up. Cat's gotta smell it. Hey, what's up, cartoon friends? Uh, I did a thing. I remember ordering three different plants. I don't remember the quantities being this many, uh, but well, there were a bunch of boxes on the front porch this morning, so we're gonna have some fun opening these up. Was trying to find some ornamental grasses in a larger quantity and I think what ended up happening was that there were multiple sizes and I wanted to know what the difference was going to be with the different sizes when I ordered them. So here we are, too many boxes. And I didn't even do that intro right. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's raining, finally, which is why I'm indoors. Just gonna wait for the rain to lighten up and go outside and get these things popped open. I don't know what to do. I started to go outside and it started raining. Need to get these things out of their packages. I'm not supposed to leave them in their boxes. I took one of them to the sink thinking, okay, well I can open more of the sink. You know, you cut the bottom out, pull the plant out and it wouldn't be that messy, but now the sink's full of rice holes and I don't, I don't think that's, a, you don't want those in there. Get a lecture from the plumber next time he comes out. Last time they were here, they said, don't use the garbage disposal, which to be fair, it's because the line in the basement was clogged because of the garbage disposal. First time in what, 30 years though, I think that's how this house is, so th that's not my fault. I have heard that before though, don't use the garbage disposal. Having flashbacks to when the dishwasher kept breaking and the repairman said don't pre-rinse your dishes before you put them in there because it messes up the sensors and my brain just cannot do that. Oh yeah, plants, that's what we're here for. Sorry, ADDs running extra strong right now. I'm just, I, I guess we'll just go outside. It's not raining that hard, it's just drizzle, it's fine. I just hate wet cardboard, wet cardboard's gross. Okay, ready turbo? Go on, let's go. I think I may have pulled this off to get everything set up. So you're not seeing labels, now I can actually look at the plants. I also just walked outside holding this. This isn't how you walk with scissors. We learned that in kindergarten, right? I guess we'll just start with one that I've already opened up. May as well, it's right here. This is a Loropetalum, Loropetalum, purple pixie. It's a weeping one. It's a neat variety. Only goes one to two feet high, three to four feet wide. You can see the info right there. A zone seven to 10. I'm 6B, 7A, so you know, I don't know, we'll see how that does. But the laurel petalums, really pretty shrubs if you can't see, there's the flowers. There's these beautiful pink fuchsia, probably into fuchsia red flowers that go all along the outside of the foliage and they're just, they're so pretty. Hummingbirds and butterflies love them. This one right here has a nice deep burgundy hue to its foliage and you can see that weeping habit that it has. I wanted some plants out here that I could use for some more fall into winter type arrangements that weren't annual so that I can plant them out in the springtime if they survive the winter. 6B7A, I don't know, but it's gonna be in a container so it can be moved inside if temperatures get too cold. In a container, I would probably move this inside when it drops below, I guess 20 just to be safe, which is well above zone seven temperatures but uh, it's in a container right when things are in a pot they're more exposed and they're gonna go through it some more so you have to be a little bit more protective with them i'm trying to get that there's a string in there that doesn't want to cut gonna be a long video if i spend that much time cutting the string off every single one of these yeah see they have a beautiful weeping habit to them i like the different colors that you have with the foliage the purple and the green there's some bronzy undertones Kind of airy, it's not too big and chunky. The bulk of what I find where I live for fall containers, uh, really the main trailers are sweet potato vines, which as soon as you have frost, boom, they're done. It's a zone seven, it's a perennial, it can handle some frost. And it'll be around longer than some of the others. Do I dive right into the big one? No, let's go with the smaller ones. I'd like to clear the space out some. I went through in the kitchen and opened all of these from the top and then remembered that it makes a lot more sense to just do it from the bottom. So when you open them from the bottom, you can just take them, set them down, and pull the top off and boom, you're done. Oh, ooh, that looks, that's a beautiful plant. That's very pretty. Got a holder in it. 
plastic bag with a zip tie. Oh, that looks nice. I think there are a few more of those. I'm gonna open them all up so you can see them all together. Hold on, before I go any further, I know there are some people where the packaging is very important, which I understand. This is an order from Home Depot. So all of these plants are coming from different places. They're just providing basically, it's kind of like Wayfair or Walmart, they'll ship from different vendors. So it's hard to say that just because you order from Home Depot, you'll have some more packaging. It all depends on what vendor is sending out those plants. But for the most part, they're on boxes with the push tabs. You know, can you just, you do this, do that with them. Labeled this side up, another push tab on the other side. And you can pull the plants out from the top if you want to, but it's a lot easier just to cut open the bottom and lift the whole thing up. That way you're not pulling on the root ball on any of the plants. And some of them, like this larger one, it's actually labeled saying open from the bottom. So there's the packaging. Some of the plants are in bags with the string on them. The other one were in the bag with the zip tie, was in the bag with the zip tie. You saw that if anything unusual or different shows up, I'll show you otherwise. I'm gonna get the rest of these opened up. Gosh, these are absolutely beautiful, aren't they? Look at that gorgeous foliage. These are the Everillo, or Everio, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Carex from the Evercolor line of Carex from Southern Living. There's the tag. You can see everything about it, part shade to shade. They go, what does that say? 12 to 18 inches high, 12 to 18 inches wide. They tend to stay more on the low side. They're semi evergreen and they are good zones five to nine. The more mild your climate, then the, the more likely they are to be evergreen, right? Kind of like a hookara, I would imagine. Sometimes they'll be evergreen, sometimes not so much, or like an autumn fern. Sometimes they might be evergreen for you, sometimes not, hence the semi-evergreen nature of it all. These have very dramatic and showy foliage on them. Look at just how graceful they are. It's the way everything just flows out and dangles down. This great ground cover. Use this to edge your garden beds or to stick into a container. Let it drape over the edges as a trailer, a perennial trailer, being zoned five to nine. There are not a lot of grasses. I've talked about this in the video when I was planting up some Hakanakloa that will have a dramatic effect and be sturdy and nice looking in a shady area of the garden. A good grass for that, part shade to shade. I would imagine the evergreenness of these plants is going to be something along the lines of a plant that, at least where I am, 6B, 7A, they will remain mostly evergreen here probably until around maybe mid-January and then they'll start to look kind of rough and then they'll look a little bit more rough and then spring starts to come around late winter into spring and they're probably about 50 to 60 percent burnt out and need to be just cut back to the ground and then they'll flush back out and look great again. That's how that goes with most things that are labeled as semi-evergreen. I just can't get over how beautiful that dramatic foliage is so pretty we're gonna pause for an airplane you might be wondering why do you have so many but because i'd like to edge a garden bed with them and these are all different sizes I, just, I wanted to see what the different sizes meant sometimes it makes a difference sometimes it does not so down here i have four of the most inexpensive or the least expensive i should say that was listed and these were 2.5 quart containers and i believe they were 16.98 a pop and then up here this is a 2.6 quart container for $18.49 or something like that. 2.5, 2.6, $2 more. Then over here to the right, a full-on one gallon for $22.98. And this is what I've been seeing at most of the local nurseries around here are this one gallon one. And they've been looking more like this down here. It's because we've had this drought this year. So I'm not blaming that on the nurseries. That was one of the reasons that I ordered them just because I know that a lot of what's in stock right now around me is crispy, burnt up, and just not looking that great. So I thought I'd order them directly from the growers and uh, be able to show what the different sizes look like. It's one that if you were to buy them in this size, then they should easily be the same size as the one gallon by the end of the growing season that is and then next year expect them to go that full 18 to 20 or 24 inches wide just big drapey beautiful dramatic foliage uh going forward if i wanted to buy more i would honestly i'd probably just stick with these little guys i think they're going to be easier to work with as far as getting them into containers and speaking of containers look at look at this would be a great color combination just popping one of these in there not just one of these but having that over the edge of the pot with something taller in the background. That's beautiful. Those go really well together. 
the nice aqua color on the ripple planter with the chartreuse green foliage. So that's what's going on with these. You get, get the picture here. Everello or Everrio, not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it. Carex. Carex is a large family of ornamental grasses that generally do pretty well in part shade. Sometimes in full shade, I have issues with getting mine to come back the next year. So I think that they need some more encouragement from the sun on the ground to help wake them up in the springtime. So I wouldn't go too deep shade with them. In general, it's always good to just remember that the warmer your climate is, chances are the more shade you should probably give them. Uh, same thing with the more arid, more dry and arid, the more shade that they're going to want. Yeah, these look great. I'm so happy with these. Do you, you want a better look at the one gallon size? I could probably pull this down so you can see a top-down comparison of everything. There's the one gallon. It is definitely bigger, substantially bigger than the ones that are in the 2.5 quart. And y'all probably know the drill, right? With perennials, you're paying for time. So this plant's just older. It took longer to grow off, so it's going to cost more. That's the way that goes with plants. It's not a huge price difference between the two, but if I were planting up a whole bunch of them, I'd probably just stick with the smaller ones. A lot of the newer types of Carex that are out there have been grown off and bred properly so that they have more vigor to them and more sturdiness. So I would imagine they should be a good size by the end of the growing season if you were to grow with a smaller size. Remember, if you grow with an even bigger size, you're going to have an even bigger plant by the end of the growing season. So this was just, it was just for me, I needed to see what the size difference was going to be with all these. And like I said, I think that for planting a whole bunch, I would stick with these. And just for a container, if I just want something really big and dramatic to drape over the edge of a pot, that looks so good. Such a beautiful plant. I love the color of the foliage. In the shade, that's going to light things up and make whatever area that I have them planted in really stand out and have a good pop. Because, you know, it's the shade. You don't want to plant too many dark things in the shade. You need to highlight the areas, draw your eye back into the shade and help contrast. Yes, the word contrast. Okay, that was enough of that. We're gonna move on to the next ones. Open from the bottom. That is good advice, but with a package this big, wondering if that might be a challenge. I don't wanna damage the plants. I'm trying to get in there and slice the bottom of that package open. But if that's how they labeled it, then just assume that they've already accounted for that that the plants are packed properly, that that's not going to be an issue. Yeah, okay, that looks fine. Oh, this one's cute. That's got some really nice leaves on it. Look at that foliage. That's freaking adorable. Look at the foliage on this. I set everything up and then I'm just dragging it down. No point in setting up shops sometimes. Foliage, it's so round and buttony. They're like little teddy bear ears. This is a gardenia. This is Diamond Spire gardenia. I'll pull the tag up. There it is. It's just a beautiful gardenia. It's supposed to bloom spring through fall, single white flowers. Nice gardenia fragrance. It's a gardenia, right? So it's what it's going to do. Spring through fall, intermittent blooming during the hottest parts of summer. It's pretty normal for them. What's nice about the Diamond Spire gardenia is that this one has been bred to have a more formal shape to it. So it's, well, as the name suggests, a spire. It's supposed to grow up into more of a column or a pillar, only going, I believe, three to four feet high, two feet wide, full sun to part shade. The more warm and dry your climate, the more shade I would give it. These are a zone seven to 10. I feel like that's being generous, but I don't know. That's just me being judgy. Gardenias in zone seven, like maybe seven B, right? To maintain their evergreenness for them to hold onto their foliage during the winter. I will be treating this like I was talking about with the Laurel Petalum. It's going to be in a container, and if it's going to drop below probably 20, I'll just scoot it inside. Zone 7 obviously can go much cooler than 20 degrees Fahrenheit, but I don't want to run the risk of their foliage burning or them having to go through even more of a shock if I let them go down to, say, 10 degrees or even 0 degrees and then rush them in the house where it's 70 then that's, that's just not great for them. So around 20, I'll scoot them in, kind of like I do with my windmill palms. Nice shape to it. And this is, you know, from the nursery, right? So it's still in its container. Imagine when this has been grown out for a couple more seasons and it start to really fill out and all these, the leaves, these things. I love a gardenia, their flowers are great, but I really appreciate nice, well-shaped, glossy foliage. That's what we have going on here. Look at that foliage. It's 
It's got a great shape to it. It's nice and glossy. Spacing between the leaves along the stem is even nice. It's a great looking plant. It's been on my wish list for a while. Just hadn't seen them around the nursery, so went ahead and threw it in with the order. I think that this is going to be a fun one to have around. It's not very common for gardenias to have a uh, more formal shape to them. Usually you have to go with a boxwood or hollies and things that you can keep pruned up to keep them looking like they're in the right shape. Even like a Manhattan Euonymus, I can see some similarities there with the foliage, but you got to stay on top of pruning them to make sure they maintain that nice formal shape to them. Gardenias tend to be either low and kind of flat or just sort of wide and wild. You can keep them pruned and keep them looking nice, but it takes a long time to establish them and get them to a place where you can do much of that with them. Whereas with this one, you don't have to do that. Hey bud, a little cameo, turbo time. That's what's so great about the Diamond Spire, is it just is bred to have a very nice shape to it. It's going to look excellent in containers, right? Maybe on the front porch, put one on each side of the doorway. And it's something more special than say just a boxwood. Now there's anything wrong with a boxwood or a holly, but you get the flowers. And I love fragrance, especially near entryways. It's so nice walking in and out of the house having fragrant flowers near the door or near windows that you like to open up. Are you eating the petun- don't eat the petunias, what are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry, were you just licking them? That's unusual, he doesn't usually do that. He generally stays away from the plants. What was I talking about? He's on it today. A little bit of rain makes the Labrador happy. So yeah, that's it. It's just a nice looking shrub and it's a gardenia. So fragrance, flowers. I tend to actually like the single flowers on a gardenia. I like being able to see the yellow in the center. There's just something kind of cute about it, almost cartoon-like with <laughs> those flowers on the magnolias, but uh, magnolias, similar scent, some more plants in a lot of ways, but no, I'm referring to the gardenia flowers. I, though I'm not going to hit on a double fly. I just, I love gardenias. And this is a great one. Not going to be trying it in the ground. I know I'm zone seven, but I would like to at least get it bigger and have a lot more girth on the wood before attempting it in the ground. Having a uh, thick wood on the plant makes a big difference with winter survival. What's the other? Oh, it's one more. There's one more plant over here. It's a fig. Little Miss Figgy. Great for containers. Yes. This one stays small. Four to six feet high, three to four feet wide. Pretty small for a fig. Zone seven to ten full sign where i live 6b 7a i know i keep saying that figs usually are hardy here not all of them obviously like the chicago and i think one of the turkeys they tend to be fairly hardy here but with bad winters they'll die all the way to the ground but then they'll come right back in the springtime so this is one that i would like to try in the ground eventually but i want to grow it out some more and get it to be a larger more established plant first get your typical fig leaves on here but much smaller because it's a much smaller plant it's supposed to bear fairly heavily especially for the size that it is and it's supposed to be pretty cold hardy too they have it listed as zone seven to ten so that was what sold me on it and again i'll talk more about the cold hardiness and keeping it indoors later it's supposed to fruit prolifically spring and fall deep burgundy fruits with a sweet center that's what I was just reading off the tag. I didn't have that memorized. I've seen pictures of people on Instagram who've had these and they have like all their cute little figs and they say they're really good. So I thought that that would be a fun one to try. Some of the other figs that are more cold hardy get to be quite large, right? I mean, they're figs. It's a ficus. They get big. And uh, I don't necessarily have the space for that. But Little Miss Figgy, I can make room for this at four to six feet high, three to four feet wide, whether I'm going to be keeping it in a container all year, so moving it in the house in the winter or the grow space in the winter time, and then having it outside spring through fall. Or if I were to have this in the ground, I could make room for it much more easily than I could for like the Chicago Hardy, which gets pretty big. Even with our winters where they will get killed back to the ground if we have a really bad winter, they still return with a lot of vigor and become very big plants. This won't do that because it's not supposed to. You don't buy this. If you want a big fig, this isn't the fig to get. And then back to what I was saying before about keeping it indoors during the winter time. Figs over winter wonderfully as a dormant plant. So you can take them and put them someplace that's cool. Keep them more on the dry side, water very sparingly. I treat them a lot like how I would, a, almost like a plumeria or a lantana or a bougainvillea, where uh, I only water them if they're looking just totally desiccated. Otherwise, they need to be in a spot that's cool, more on the dark side, not necessarily in a dark room, but a poorly lit area, right? Far away from a window, something like that, away from drafts and everything. Your typical houseplant carries don't want to dry the plant out. 
And then you resume watering when the day lengths start to get longer. And you can usually see when the plant wants to grow. You'll start to see a little bit of swelling. I mean, this isn't that, but it's an example of some bud tip that's swelling. You can kind of see that in there. That will start to swell up. The camera doesn't want to focus on it, but I think you get the picture. And then resume watering. That's why I've always done with figs and it usually works really, really well. So this one right here, that little Miss Figgy and the Diamond Spire Gardenia, those are plants that I've had on my wish list for a pretty long time. I'm gonna start rambling. I've talked about the plants and if you get it, love the Laura Petalum. Obviously that Carex, so, so, so nice looking. That Evercolor, there's another one that's more of a white color to it. I don't know if it's all white. I can't really remember the specs on it, but it's very pretty. So I would check that one out. If you type in like Southern Living, Evercolor, Carex, it will more than likely come up for you. I wanted that chartreuse green color for the area that I'm going to be planting these up in. And the, come on, look at that. What a beautiful plant. That actually might pair well with the Laurel Petalum. The gardenias can take more sun, but when the, but in the heat of the summer, I tend to keep them more into the part shade type of lighting. So I think the Laurel Petalum would be a good option for that. I have a good time getting these set up and planted up and make some arrangements. Not so much with the fig, but with the grasses, the Laurel Petalum and that gardenia. Good looking stuff. Happy with everything I got. Like the quality. Looking pretty good. The grasses look nice. Didn't see much as far as bad foliage goes on that Laurel Petalum. There's some yellowing on the inside of the gardenia, but it was just shipped, so I'm not shocked by that at all. No surprise there. And the same thing with the fig. There were a few leaves in the box. But that's just the way it goes when you ship plants. I have gotten plants in the mail that looked absolutely horrible, and I would give these a uh, solid A as far as shipping goes. And again, you got to take the shipping and everything with a grain of salt. So if you're ordering plants from a big box store like Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, uh, Wayfair, <laughs> they sell plants. They're basically just providing a hub for people who sell plants. It's not necessarily through them, so you just, you don't really know what you're going to get. But Southern Living, common brand, you can probably find them at your local nurseries. And if they don't have what you're looking for, you can just say, hey, order me some Everillos or a Miss Figgy. This is gonna be fun to watch grow. I'd say I'm the most excited about this out of everything, but everything here is so pretty. All right, comment down below. <laughs> What's going on in your gardens? Have you tried any of these plants before? I'm, Little Miss Figgy is a fairly popular one. Diamond Spire is catching on, and uh, Laurel Petalums, they're just kind of a classic in the South. So y'all probably have some more experience with those and some of the neat types. Purple Pixie is what I wanted because that weeping habit, uh, but there are a lot to choose from. Tons of different Laurel Petalums to choose from. All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.